to the unveiling and public presentation of Muhammadu Buhari, The Nigerian Legacy, 2015 to 2023, and also the Working with Buhari Reflections of a Special Advisor, Media and Publicity, Mr. Adishino. Your Excellency, General Buhari, President, President Buhari, it was a great pleasure to chair a great event in your life uh, the, at the book launch of your biography at your presidential inauguration in 2015. I don't know whether you remember that. <laughs> Here again today, I am privileged to unveil and publicly present your book, The Muhammad Buhari, The Nigerian Legacy, in five volumes, and an extra work by your loyal and dedicated special advisor, uh, media and publicity. Chief Femi Adeshino. To all of you distinguished audience and invitees, thank you for your honoring the invitation and making the occasion so memorable. My work is made easy by the production of the five volumes of a well-researched an authoritative work, um, the legacy topics by many renowned intellectuals and authorities on all the subject discussed and the various achievements made by President Buhari and his government uh, throughout uh, the eight years. We shall hear more authoritatively about it from the book reviewer, Mr. Shola Oshinke. Am I right? Very good. The list of the legacy topics uh, to be presented or unveiled today are journey uh, to the presidency up to the first inauguration in 2015. The management of the economy, and the third one is national security and human development, and the fourth one is industry and infrastructure, and the fifth book uh, topic is strategic leadership, governance, and development. Now, I won't have to go through all this book, as I've said. Uh, Chief uh, Oshunke will do the details. So all these subjects were dutifully uh, monitored by Mr. President, and every subject carefully scrutinized by the whole team, you know, his team, and the president is always uh, in church. And these, of course, usually are done you know, at the Federal Executive Council meetings. Most of the economic side uh, during your time was largely looked after by uh, the uh, you know, vice president. Professor Yemi Osibanjo GCON. And from personal observation and reports that uh, one receives, uh, they are, are usually, all this uh, work are usually, at, uh, they all achieve reasonable success, all, uh, in, and, and in all cases. But uh, there is no doubt about it, you know, Nigeria uh, is not bereft of critiques 
and strident criticisms are made on any topic or any subject that is done. As though, and then of course giving the impression as though nothing is achieved. I hope you will be convinced by the presentation uh, that would be made, that would be made that much had, was achieved and uh, had, you know unacknowledged and commended. I believe that in certain areas there seemed to be some lacuna uh, in success. For example, in certain areas of security and uh, in certain areas of economics and in certain areas of finances. Yes, uh, we have you know, some problems, but a lot was achieved all the same. However, above all, I salute your courage in your foray or journey into politics and also in, uh, in, the pres in, the, in governance and presidency. Can one say, uh, like a good Irishman, the saying, uh, as a good Irishman, uh, the third term, you are third term lucky before you got through uh, and survived uh, the, the, the eight year period. And of course, especially during the second term, uh, in the tense uh, hostile political contest uh, before your, your second term, the contest that ultimately brought you and President uh, Abele Good, uh, Abele Good Luck, uh, uh, Jonathan in an exemplary, reconciliatory position that augured well for the country as a good example for the future of politics in Nigeria. I think you may recall that he said uh, during the contest, I quote, my ambition is not worth the blood of any Nigerian. And, and he graciously conceded defeat even before the final results were announced. You, Mr. President Buhari, was visibly in a touch and appreciative of, the, uh, of that statement or comment, which indeed lowered, uh, lowered the political temperature at the time. And of course, we were able to have a successful inauguration you know, after that. This is a good example of Niger uh, to all Nigerian uh, politicians and leaders. Uh, to emulate. At the end, Mr. President, you are able to ensure a smooth transition and hand over to your successor, President Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tin uh, Tinubu. And you did this for the good of Nigeria and Nigerians. There were so many, you know, comment at that time, you know, that uh, well, things will not go uh, will not go right. But it is really great to see you at the podium and handing over uh, to uh, your successor. Uh, President Asiwaju uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and I can assure you, I was really, you know, happy that you are able to successfully hand over uh, to another great leader that is going to give Nigeria. <laughs> you know, a new direction as, you know, as well. Mr. President, uh, before I end, 
from the invitation that I was given, I saw that, uh, uh, you know, I have a co-chairman for this occasion, and that is uh, uh, General Ibi Haruna. I think he's an old colleague. I don't know whether you are you know, colleagues at uh, your training establishment, or not. but at least I know that uh, he would like for me to I uh, would like Fabi to ask him to, uh, to come to say uh, you know, a word or two uh, to you, uh, you know, your old relationship, and also to be able to say something about the, uh, uh, your, uh, you, you know, uh, additional, uh, your, your respected and loyal uh, media and publicity advisor. So, if you would uh, uh, agree with that, you know, I hope uh, you know he can come, you know, and say a word or two uh, for this your committed and loyal uh, servant, Your Excellencies, <laughs> eminent and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of the proceeding and ensure that you get a set of this publication for your own uh, personal uh, education. And uh, also, uh, you, if you can buy some for whoever you may wish to or organization you may wish to, uh, so that at least uh, they can, uh, you know, clean uh, the the great value uh, this uh, this book you know have uh, you know are presenting. So thank you very much, Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. With one Nigeria that became his name, a man who qualifies as a distinguished. May I start by also. after standing on the protocol to acknowledge His Excellency, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, and take this opportunity to congratulate him on his electoral success. Congratulations, Your Excellency. I had made an acquaintance with you when years back I was on the board of Mobile Oil. And we knew ourselves reasonably then. And you know, I was very close to Ms. His, may his soul rest in peace, Chief Bayo Kuku, and others. Your Excellency, congratulations. I can't go by without recognizing also my Commander-in-Chief when I was serving in the Army and through our turbulent years, His Excellency, former Commander-in-Chief, General Yakubu Gawan. May I also recognize the former Commander-in-Chief, President Muhammadu Buhari, and to say this has been my opportunity to say thank you for your hospitality when I was in Ibadan, serving in the chambers of Chief Olisa Chukura, S.A. and may his soul rest in peace. I was a student there, and you harbored me in your guest house. We never saw, but I enjoyed all the hospitality. And in all these years, this is the closest I've gotten to you. And it's an opportunity for me to say thank you. You had given me your help in becoming a lawyer and uh, an old one now. 
having 43 years post call. Um, the Sorry, I'm told when you get to about 80 something, which we are now, you are a bit slower, shaky, and your voice also trembles. <laughs> I am following the queue <laughs> from my very senior commander in chief. Um, I am honored by this North's invitation to participate in the launching of an exceptionally interesting innovation by a public servant doing a post-mortem of the social character or characteristics and let's say giving us a private glimpse into Buhari's private humanity. As a retired member of the Nigerian Army, I can say that I am familiar with, with certain characterizations by the journalists and media. Generally, and Buhari he gave us the impression is a stern and no nonsense person. Additional's book, which I've had the privilege to read, however, has brought out some revealing contrasting personality of Buhari that is not well known or associated with him. Take for example that a combination of Buhari and Idiabo is just some atmosphere of dark clouds of a waiting storm Thunder, floods, discipline, quietude, and general orderliness. A war against indiscipline. I think many Nigerians will associate Buhari with that habit that has now become Nigerian. Queen to board buses or aircraft or anywhere in public. Laugh. And he does take jokes. <laughs> Petroleum industry builders had become an act under his presidency. The second Niger Bridge Numerous water dams for agriculture, water supply, hydropower projects. These were littered all over the countryside, to list a few. Though much credit is not publicized as his successes in the spheres of economic and social development. Deterring criminalities, terrorism, and insecurity. Buhari has, however, countered these evils with determination, steadfastness, and courage. Well done, Your Excellency. As for me, I appreciate what you have done. And at the same time, Buhari preserved the integrity of the Nigerian democratic state, 
upon which we are still building. I congratulate Chief Femi Additional for the book and recommend it for posterity the general public, politicians, academics, individuals, and historians. I leave much of what can be said about Buhari by the reviewers of the book. I have said a little, but the book reviewers will say a lot more about his attitudes and that of his detractors and vendors of spiritualism or witchcraft in Asorok. <laughs> the leader act on a major program to teach the people of the region how to read and write. And it was enormously successful. After a while, they evaluated the success and they realized one thing. They had taught people how to write, how to read. But there were no books to read. The chief education officer of northern Nigeria at that time, Dr. Rupert East, said, we have taught the people how to ride horses, but we have given them no horses. And from that point then, they set up the Northern Literature Bureau, which began to generate literature, books for people to read. And that's when you had the emergence of some of the well-known first-generation Northern authors, Abu Bakr Imam, Aminu Kano, Saadu Zungur, and, and so forth. The important event of today has a tie-in with that sort of incident. Barely a year after he has left office, some people still ask the question, including men and women in our own political party, the APC, what did Buhari do with his eight years? So Femi, and I'm sure many more will come after, said, let's not get angry with them. Let us give them what to read. This is the significance of today's event. So, Femi and this other group, uh, Dr. Yakubu, have done a good thing by writing books on President Muhammad Buhari and what he did. What is going to be better is that we buy these books and make sure that they are read all over the country all over the world. It is my privilege at this time to invite the book reviewer, CNN journalist of the year, Emeritus. He's been CNN journalist all these years. Shola Oshinkeye. Please come and review the book. Five minutes to review a 488 page book. So what I did, I edited as General IBM, IBM Aruna was reading. Now I present what I have left. <laughs> Mr. President, the author, Chief Femi Adeshino, who has been my friend for 34 years, means his no word about the nature of the book he's about to gift the world. Not a book about government policies, micro or macro economics, or those bitter concussions that the Bretton Woods uh, 
institutions forced down the throats of third world countries. The 488 paid book is the authentic Buhari story told from the perspective of a man who has spent eight solid years serving him. In Femi's words, working with Buhari, reflections of a special advisor, media and publicity, in quote, is about the Buhari, is about the Buhari software, not the hardware, end of quote. Written in a lucid prose with precision and focus, Adeshino in 30 solid chapters provides a thrilling insight not only into his own struggles and vindications, frustrations and fulfillments, but also this, the human side of President Buhari that the world has never known. In the early chapters, the author traces the, his love story with President Buhari to December 31st, 1983, when, he, when the president came into uh, the Nigerian uh, political space. He also traces and recalls the state of flux he fell into when his appointment was announced on May 31, 2015 and his baptism of fire that came quickly, so quickly in the very first week of his assumption of office. That baptism started with the parliamentary coup, in quote, of June 9, 2015, that produced Dr. Bukola Saraki as Senate President and Honorable Yakubu Dugara as Speaker House of Representatives. This chaplain, uh, contrasted the party's choice of Dr. Ahmed Lawan and Right Honorable Femi Bajami Amila. The writer recalls how Buhari returned from Germany in the, in the wee years of the same day, June 9, only to be confronted with the crisis. The party hierarchy was mad. The president was angry and sad, very sad. And Femi Additional Force was in the country. Later, he summoned courage and went to the president and told the president that he wanted him to issue a statement on the scenario that had just unfolded, but which contradicted the party's position. In quote, a constitutional process had been concluded, he wrote, and he will work with the elected leadership. That was when the author noticed how long the president index finger, how long it was. <laughs> president Buhari just lifted up his gaze, looked him straight in the face, and said, I won't say anything. <laughs> ben Femi sank further, but he quickly recovered and became adamant. He reminded the president, Mr. President, the day I resumed, you told me that don't be afraid to tell me the truth. That you know, in the position I am, people will shield me from the truth. He also admitted that I'm a general, and generals don't broach argument. But the promise for me, that if needs be, he will allow him to argue. Argue with me. Femi said that to the president, and the president had no choice but to fish out his pen and edited uh, Femi's prepared uh, speech slightly, adding somewhat that the constitutional process had been somewhat concluded. Then, and something after the process, in quote, then he approved and firmly released. The rest is history. Over the next eight years, Femi will confront other tests like that, coming from different directions from the opposition, from the traditional media, the social media, netizens, as they are called, 
who are the, who are the loudest when it comes to offering opinions. Uh, the, even the church, Femi is a pastor. The church didn't spear him. When the prophets sought to see the president, and it was a no, the prophet would go to the rooftops and foresee that something is going to happen. <laughs> that we should pray for the presidential fleet. Of course. The, the president made many trips, and thank God nothing happened, apart from the usual turbulence and all that and all that. However, like I said, Femi faced more tests, but the most virulent were the bruha over the president's certificate. The former head of crisis, Nam Di Kano, insurgency, his head crisis, and the jubil of Sudan saga. <laughs> the author captured all in chapter nine. Like I said, <laughs> like I said, I've edited the papers. So I'm going to jump. I'll skip the media. And go to another very interesting aspect. And that is the characterization of General Buhari, of President Buhari, excuse me, first as a bigot, as a mean, taciturn, non-smiling, totally indifferent to pain and pleasure, as if he was not a human being with blood flowing in his veins. Later, Buhari's traducers would add other words like bigotry, and ethnic irredentism to the lexicon, and so on. However, Femi ascribed the pernicious profiling of the president to people scared of retribution for their corrupt tendencies. Still, the opposition employed that to the market candidate Buhari as he was then in 2003, 2007, and 2011, and the president lost. However, by the time, uh, however, by 2015, uh, I don't know whether the president, like uh, President Tinobu, sang a miloko. However, those who believed they mobilized with Femi, part of the Buari crowd, writing week after week and all that, and by God's grace, the labels didn't matter anymore, and President Buari won an overwhelming victory. Buari a bigot? The author asks. He also, in another breath, he rejects that profiling in his entirety. Not that Buari, he says, is not the Buari that has Christian cooks and Christian drivers. Not the Buari that will attend a predominantly Christian event fly all the way from, from, I think, Katsina or Kaduna to Lagos to attend a, a, a Christian event and sat all through. I'm referring to the uh, commendation service and family additional. Head for his mom in August of 2013 uh, when uh, she passed at the age of 75. God, God bless her soul and may her memory continue to be a blessing. Femi captured that in, um, chapter, in, in chapter 2. And he writes about the his principle that a man who never forgives a good turn, a man loyal all the way, an embodiment of loyalty. The author disagrees with the, nepo, with the nepotism tag on Buhari as regards alleged lopsidedness in appointments during his uh, tenure. The allegation Femi argues in the book is a product of malice by the opposition who sought to injure and um, injure the president politically. Uh, 
I, I jump to another contentious issue. Like I said, General Aruna has taken the, the wind off my sail, but I will still manage. Now, the, the, the poster is between, General, between President Buhari and former President Olusegun or Basanjo, who made the most uh, foreign trips. President Obasanjo confessed at Oxford in January of 2018 that he made a paltry 97 trips in the entire eight years he spent in office, essentially to convince the world that Nigeria was now free of the military and the country had now become a good investment destination. But records... You know, internet doesn't lie, and it doesn't forgive. It doesn't forget, it doesn't forgive. Records, as, as some researchers now brought out, show that Baba Yabo made over 103 foreign trips within the first 168 days of his first term. And now about President Buhari. The author provides the answer in chapter 21, where he listed the international trips made by his principal, naming the country, the exact location, period, and purpose. Between June, he said that between June 3, uh, 2015, when he made his first trip, and May 6, 2023, when he made his last, President Buhari Cho excuse me, chalked 95 trips. You can do the maths and make your deductions as to who the winner is. <laughs> President Buhari, very early in uh, his administration, sad, okay, this is talking about the humanity, the human side of President Buhari. Very early, 2015, he removed uh, Mr. Ita Epeyo, a South Southerner, as the Director General of the Department of State Services, DSS, and replaced him with Lawa Musa Daura from Kasina State, another test for, for Femi. Fearing a backlash, Femi, in page, 96, in page 166, said he laid bare his fear before his principal. I had asked him, tell me right, and I, in quote, Mr. President, you are removing Ita, I mean Ita Epeyom from the South South. Why not replace him with someone from that region for balance? The President answered, before people are recommended to me, a search must have been made by an appropriate set of people or committee, and one or two or three people are brought forward in order of performance and competence. Now, if someone comes first and I pass him because he is from my home state or on the basis of ethnicity or religion, he said categorically, Allah will never forgive me. He said, Allah will judge me, to quote the author directly. But the president continued. He assured Femi, anyway, don't worry. The appointments will balance out. The jury is out whether the appointments actually balanced out. I leave that. Say for a few typos and one or two pages with faint print, and despite the fact that Femi is generously sympathetic to his boss, the book published by Savari Books Limited is a treasure trove for those who earnestly seek to understand the Muhammadu Buhari enigma. I have known Femi for 35, 34 years, like I said. He has a clean heart, and his writing is very clean. He is honest and brutally frank. Therefore, you will see all these, book, all these attributes in the book, and I recommend this book to everybody in this room and outside to researchers, Journalists, teachers, 
students of history, and those who test for knowledge. I was spellbound when I read the book, and I'm sure when you get your copy, you will feel the same. So, don't leave this all without getting a copy for yourself. And like my sister Eugenia said, buy copies for your family, for your friends, for your library, and neighbors. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my job is done. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Excellencies. Thank you, Mrs. Buhari, for the support. and five of a five volume book which must be an adverse task indeed especially when you consider that volume one has 15 chapters and two appendices volume three has 22 chapters and volume five has 29 chapters including four insider testimonies one by a former minister and three by the chief executives of very critical federal agencies under the Buhari presidency. But my task is probably made a lot easier by the fact that we have several continuities and complementarities and integration across the several chapters in these three volumes. Now, although this is quite useful, because the editor makes very clear that there is no clear-cut theoretical or conceptual framework that will tie all of these contributions together. There is a lot that can be said for the continuities. And yet, these continuities are also responsible for the repetitious overlaps that you'll find across many of the contributions. Well, while those repetitions and overlaps help to reinforce what we should study in these volumes, I think that it tells something about the central thread that ties all of them together, the man Muhammadu Buhari. Now, take this very seriously. All of the contributors come from different perspectives and employ different data, yet they are all able to arrive at the same conclusions. This must be something that is truly remarkable. Now, and I find that this convergence, or if you like, the coherence that then flows through the book, is all about the consistency the stability and the predictability of the man Buhari himself. And that is the one common theme that you find tying all of the contributions together. Now, this is all about what the different contributors call the Buhari reputation, or comes across as one author puts it, a man of irrevocable 
incorruptibility. Meaning that this is an outstanding and extraordinary leader. Now, this is the great building envelope that ties together effective leadership as all of it. But let me just say that Buhari himself has almost as a matter of calculated strategy, given tact and traction to this mystique of who he is by adopting what he himself in his inaugural speech told all of us that he's for everyone and he's not for anyone. Now, all of the contributors refer to his principled non-interference, part of which we just heard from the last reviewer. The fact that he says, well, the constitutional course has had its effect, and there's nothing I can do about that. That is quintessential non-interference. Now, this mystique also became something that rekindled the Nigerian mystique for all the world to celebrate. And therefore, Buhari conferred on Nigeria in the eight years a great deal of credibility, a great deal of integrity, and in global acknowledgement of that personality, he became the acknowledged African champion of the anti-corruption crusade. Now, if all of these things suggest to you that these five volumes, but especially three volumes that I'm reviewing, are a biography, you need to search elsewhere. These three volumes, and I'm sure the other two volumes, which will soon be reviewed, tell us about how Buhari addressed serious national issues, how he arrived at the priorities that drove his government, and most of all, how he laid the foundation for searching for solutions and remedying the historical accidents that have made our country a little dysfunctional, and how to place, I'm reviewing, are very closely related, and they are mutually reinforcing. In volume one, which is Journey to the Presidency, you would find something about the Buhari mystique, and this is the one that smoothened his transition from one of military authoritarian leadership to democratic civilian leadership. And that is the doggedness and the resilience that saw him through the battle to get back to the presidency. Three failed attempts and one final success in 2015. And then, as we say in Nigeria, he had, as a matter of saying you have done well, got another term of four years, making eight on the whole. So volume one should be read as a foundation providing a conceptual very strong conceptual background about man Buhari himself, to which many of the contributions are devoted. His move from being a military general and the Buhari Diagbo mystique to the point where he became president. And I think all of those things are done against the backdrop of the fact, which many people forget, that by 2015, we were at a strong inflection point in our nation, national history that looked like the South Africans were in the days when apartheid was going to collapse. And the swan song was adapt or die. But they chose to adapt. Now, in Buhari's coming, we found something that justified the change slogan and made it even historically necessary. That is volume one. In volume two, volume three, beg your pardon, we find 22 chapters. In all of these chapters, we are dealing with issues of security and human development. And, and you will find that the authors are very clear in their minds what today we call the kinetic and non-kinetic approaches had to be balanced under the Buhari presidency. And how did they balance this? He dealt with issues that suggested that the most sustainable way to address issues of insecurity would be to address the underbellies 
of social stability, social cohesion, and human empowerment. And therefore, in those very, very interesting chapters, you find things about youth empowerment, you find things about women's empowerment, you find issues of you know, the um, army, the air force, and the navy, and how those things balanced out. But most critically, we are reminded that Buhari had a very calculated deployment of the strictures of the theory of concentric circles. Um, Professor Gambari is here, is the great exponent of um, concentric circles. Now, but in doing things that would make for sustainable partnerships, enduring partnerships to address those issues of insecurity and underdevelopment. And he put human beings at the center of it all. In volume five, there is focus on strategic leadership, on governance, and on development. And this is the largest of all the volumes, 29 chapters on the whole. But what those chapters do is to tell us how Buhari sought to research the national agenda. And it's critical because there are two very momentous formations. Um, one is that in the second tenure, he tried to up the ante of the reforms that had gone on with a view to ensuring that those things became enduringly consolidated. And that's what we find. Now, if you look at the chapters that address the corrective agenda that came with that, especially as manifested in the final bills that were made into law in the last month of his presidency, you will find that attempts were made to correct the imbalances and injustices that had characterized our country's existence. One of these, of course, long before then, was the Petroleum Industry Act, um, which everyone agrees was a critical and very monumental intervention in our country's trajectory. Now, all of the reforms about the correctional services, the police, the judiciary, all of those things you would find analyzed properly in volume five. But volume five, in these three volumes, you find a scientific basis for validating conclusions. Because if there is no basis for those empirical validations, we cannot hold those things to be true. We can only say they are part of the Buhari mystique. But the nature of the legacies that I see and that I have pointed out will suggest to us something that I had done several years ago. Mr. President, sir, you will recall that you authored a book, Drawing Water from an Empty Well. And I had the privilege to be reviewer on that occasion. In my conclusion in that review, I said to you, sir, that leadership makes the difference. President Buhari drew water from an empty well, and the legacies are there for the country to follow through. I thank you, the distinguished president, your excellencies. Pages are to be delivered in just five minutes. I accept the challenge, however, but I will not behave as a professor of political science. I would rather choose to be an ordinary book reviewer. In this volume, your excellencies spoke to the experience and committed leadership disposition of the former president in handling these national liabilities and the turnaround in both tangible and intangible spaces. Passing through recession twice, a global pandemic, another crisis occasioned by global political economy among which was the war in Ukraine were apparently surmounted by the focused and disciplined leadership style of the administration. The volume is compressed. In my view, a compressed study of the administration's strategies of addressing the huge economic challenges and the management of our national resources. 
contributions on monetary policies, economic growth and sustainability plans, funding strategies for national development as well as programs for agricultural and industrial development of the country were very elaborate. Revenue move to industry, pension administration, oil and gas, mining, steel development, and the controversial farmers' hardest. It is a fact that history is best recorded when events are put into writing. That is the role and the relevance that these books will play now and in the future. Governance is a process, Your Excellency, a means to an end. It's not an end in itself. To alleviate the sufferings of the people, therefore, government will require firm commitment to the reforms already in place. Continuity has been identified as the major problem with governments in Africa. I do hope that the President Tinubu administration will carefully study what has been achieved and what is going on in order to deliver to the earnings of the electorate. These volumes, therefore, are recommended for everyone in school, everyone in the public and private sector, and especially those in politics, government, and administration. Thank you, Excellency. Alhaji Mutala, please come forward, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Please make way for Alhaji Mutala to join these groups of top-level excellencies to include His Excellency, Mr. President, as they unveil this very strategic and exciting book. His Excellency, the former Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibaju. Thank you very much, sir. If you would make your way up. This is the official unveiling of the book, and His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic, will take the lead to pull through along with the central subject matter and the chair to pull. Please, sir. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Here are copies of the book for optics. Please hold it up. Would appreciate that, Excellencies. And what a beautiful set of books they are. Indeed, you must not leave without getting copies of these books. Thank you very much. I would like to ask Dr. Udu Yakubu to fall out, and I'd like to invite Chief Femi Adeshino to come forward. And also, at this time, we will be needing copies of that book to quickly get. I'd like to thank your excellencies, distinguished personalities here gathered. Thank you, sir.
Thank you, Mr. President, sir. I will collect them from you. Personality, not known to me that she was talking about my humble self. And in this huge gathering of uh, Nigerians, um, before we proceed with the simplest task, which is the most difficult, of launching these books, um, perhaps I will say that Nigeria is blessed. I noted the word used by His Excellency, former Head of State, General Yakubu Gawan, who said Nigeria is not bereft of criticisms. True. This morning, Mr. President, whilst we've been struggling to explain to people that President Muhammad Bari actually smiles, Nigerians want him to keep smiling. This morning I saw on television, a national television spent many minutes criticizing President Bola Metunibu for smiling in Imo, you know where. <laughs> and of course, 220 million people is not easy to govern. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, perhaps this set of books the five volumes, and indeed including the one from Femi Adishina. They attempt to document what President Muhammad Buhari had done in 2015-2023. Not exhaustive, of course, by no means, but of course, certainly, to put on record and to ignite thoughts for people who care to research, and then they will research and find out that this country is very blessed very many leaders who meant very well for this uh, country. Um, as we proceed, Mr. President, permit me to share two statements. One from President Bola Ahmed Tinubu and one from former President, President Muhammad Buhari. In 2006, 2006 I had the privilege to represent and to be the first point of contact between the Southwestern politicians and those in the PMB group, at that time called the GMB, under the Buhari organization. And we were in Lagos, and this is very important for me, we were in Lagos and President Muhammad Buhari, then as General Muhammad Buhari was traveling, and he left me behind to discuss with those politicians who wanted to see him. They were in three groups. Some were in Victoria Island, it was Tunji Breathway. Yeah. Some were in Jabita, I think, a hotel in Ikeja near the airport with Chief Olufale, Supo Shonubari, um, Shitabe, and the rest of them. And another one was in Ikeja, mm. of course, with President Asuaju there, Baba Omo KKK was there. Happy birthday to him. And um, I remember also Abu Ibrahim, uh, Dela Lake, I think, Arabi uh, Geshola. Of course, my friend, the former governor of Kitty State, was there. In that meeting, which was the first interface for us to attempt to get power, I said to President Tinubu, sir, we have this huge critical mass. And before I proceeded, he said, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. It is not about us or about critical mass. It's about getting it to happen. And we're not in a hurry. It can happen with you. We'll give you the platform. And later, it will be with us. I say, I saw you, it will be with you. He said, no, 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 no. It is us. It's collective. Whoever it is, we'll thank God when the time comes. So I came back to Kaduna. Just before he traveled, I said, Excellency, I had a meeting with them. I gave him the briefs of all the three groups, but this is what Aswaji said. He said, um, when you have the chance, go back and tell him also I'm not in a hurry. I'm after, which I'm after something that will endure. It will pass from one to another. No matter how it comes, we have Nigeria in focus. Today, in Allah's infinite mercy, it has actually happened. 
Il sangue popolare. Criticisms like uh, General Ayyam Haruna has said, I have the belief, and I have every reason to do so, having been around politics and power, that almost every leader of Nigeria meant well for Nigeria. Those who fought the civil war and kept the nation one, built the infrastructure, the roads, the airports, the universities, there was stability, there was progress, and we're earning the dollars in the personality of Jerry Akubu Gawan, all through to now President Swaji Bola Machinubu. We've seen what you mean for Nigeria. We have a duty to follow you and to respect you and to do all those good things they intend us to do for the good of our country. So these books, they will document those things. I recommend that you buy them. I recommend that you keep them. I recommend also that you make comparisons so that all of the things that weren't so good, if any, can get better and better and better and the nation becomes much better and much better, just like what President Tinubu and President Mahmoud Buhari said in 2006. The chief lunches, of course, are our own. Two doctors, Dr. Muhammadu Indimi and Dr. Umar Mutallab, both are fathers of today. They will do the launch of the books. And we have circulated around, just for ease, the form to which the ushers had gone around with them. You can simply indicate. And we do recognize that there are governors here, there are ministers, the chief of staff, my once upon a time good friend, Mr. Speaker, sir. And uh, so many who, of course, would um, send their own contributions in the appropriate way and form. And uh, many, very many well meaning Nigerians who have told me that today is the day that they will document history of our country by buying the book in a very, very generous manner. Um, before I continue to kickstart the event, I would say, Mr. President, when we came in in 2015, President Muhammad Bari was very clear. I was the first victim. I went to him and said, all of these projects and programs did not mean well, or they wouldn't sit well in my agenda and focus in aviation. So I will take them and represent um, an agenda for you, for your approval. He said, no, 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 I'm very clear in my focus. Go and finish all those projects that were started by previous governments. And that defined our focus. And that's why today, that's why today we have the second Niger Bridge, the airports, the seaports, the railways, the water projects, the education, ICT, everything. He insisted that we must continue with those programs and projects that were started by previous governments for the benefits and the good of our country. In such a way that the future and the fortune of our country will continue to be people-centered. Thank you very much, President Mahmoud Buhari. So I think I will at this point invite our elders, our fathers, Dr. Indimi and Dr. Umar Mutallab to please kindly come forward for us. Chief Malam Al Haji Bola Hamid Tunibu, our former president, other excellencies here, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the House of Representatives, I was expecting my senior brother to speak on our behalf because National Assembly is one. I would have wanted the invitation to be done together so that uh, whatever we're going to buy will be for the National Assembly, not just one branch of the National Assembly, because we operate as one, and it's one institution. So well please, guided, uh, well guided. <laughs> thank you. But 
Mr. Chairman, Chairman of National Assembly, as you make this uh, purchase, please do remember the city of Gilgal. <laughs> Thank you, Gilgal. Uh, uh, Mr. President, the former president and the former head of state, uh, all protocols duly observed. My brother knows that it takes two to tango. Uh, without two of us, there is no act of parliament. And of course, the presidents will have to sign. But uh, initially, I never knew that the National Assembly would be recognized here. Uh, bearing in mind that the book contains the debacle of uh, Bukola Saraki and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Dogara. And, uh, if you, so I'm sure as we are reading, we may not be well placed inside, inside the book. So uh, everybody avoided the Senate President and the Speaker. Once they come nearer, they will say, all protocols observe. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I just said, see what Bukola has done to us. <laughs> but be that as it may, we want to congratulate the former president and the writers, and to say that, yes, indeed, uh, President Buhari was one man that was totally misunderstood until God brought him back as a civilian president. So congratulations. This is a major milestone. Personally, I worked closely with you, and uh, one day I said that you were totally misunderstood. Nigerians really did not know you. Just one incident, because I'm not supposed to say anything, because the National Assembly has not been recognized. So just one incident. I worked with the president, and he wanted to do just a reassignment of a staff. And he mentioned it to me in his office. I'm going to reassign one of your colleagues. So expect a new person in your office. I said, thank you, Mr. President. Do I have the, a copy of the letter? He said, no, 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 today is Friday. I don't know whether he will be happy with the reassignment. And I don't want his children to be sat on a weekend. So I will not do it until Tuesday. So I said, Mr. President, I said I won't do it until Tuesday. I want them to have a beautiful weekend. So that's the human touch of President Buhari that many Nigerians are not even aware of. Sir, history will place you positively in this country. Congratulations, sir. So the National Assembly, myself and my brother, Tajuddin Abbas, uh, we recognize the fact that the National Assembly is last in this event, but we, we believe that others will collectively donate up to 600 copies for the National Assembly, so we, we will not want to do, because sometimes when people say, I'll announce the amount later, sometimes you may not see them, because they must, they must have flown out. They must have flown out of the country, so you may not see them, they even get the amount. So we will start with a token of 50 million. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Your Excellency, my husband, the former President of Nigeria, the former Vice President, the former President of Nigeria, also the Chairman of the occasion, MB Haruna and other distinguished personalities that are here present. Uh, I have learned that, um, anyway, um, let me start with, I came from the Northeast, and um, I was offered to be the, the ambassador of peace from the Peace Institute in Washington. But I declined because I came from the Northeast. I told them that time that my hands were full because I came from the Northeast, I would like to help my people. And um, we're here today launching some of the achievements of my husband, and um, I would like to inform you that I have a future assured my pet uh, project that I had during my tenure as a First Lady of Nigeria for eight years. I have built a secondary school in Borno State in which I have over 500 unaccompanied children. They are called unaccompanied because they lost their parents, they were just living in the camp, no, no fostering, nothing. And the Borno State government 
have done their best and I decided to help them because I came from the Northeast. So I have 500 children, over 500 children. They were packaged with the learning resources. They are schooling free of charge and Borno State Government is helping me with feeding them. And also T.Y. Danjuba Foundation is doing a great job. And I would like to, for posterity and my husband's legacy, I would like to get some 15 copies of the volumes, 15 sets to keep in their library for them to read and see how much my husband fought in fighting, um, how much he fought insurgency and then make Borno a stable, more or less, and safe place to be now. Thank you so much and God bless you. Sorry, for the amount, I will discuss with Femi Adesino and my husband's cabinet. <laughs> Former head of state, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Mr. President, National Assembly is one. And I'm a very loyal member of that institution. My leader, the Senate President, spoke on behalf of members of the National Assembly, accompanied and supported by the Honorable Speaker. So on that note, Mr. President, I'm in full support of what the Senate President pledged, 15 million Naira for all of us, 600 copies. But Mr. President, my brother Hadis Rika says something. He said, I worked with former President Muhammad Buhari. So a point of correction is we worked with the former President, President Muhammad Buhari. That is the 8th Assembly and the 9th Assembly. And uh, unfortunately, I was a full blown subject in the 8th uh, Assembly parliamentary debacle. When we were in ICC, and the action was taken elsewhere in the National Assembly. And of course, that period was a turbulent period, but that is history. I want to take this opportunity, Mr. President, to commend members of the Ninth National Assembly, both the Senate and the House, for supporting fully the administration of President Muhammad Buhari. In fact, the history of that administration will not be complete without giving kudos to the members of the Ninth National Assembly particularly, because most of those legislations, reforms done by the administration were reforms and legislations that were either originated and supported and passed and then accepted by the National Assembly and the President, or initiated from the side of the Executive Arm of Government. On behalf of myself and my family, Mr. President, I will take 12 copies of six local governments. I will give each two copies for a sum of 20 million naira. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Ash, uh, President Ashwaju Bola Tinubu, the former President, all other political officers because of time. Today, I'm so happy that uh, one of my sons, uh, Mr. Femi Adishina, is from my state. And uh, he came to me that I should please come to support him for the book launch. I've read it and I've understood Mr. President, the former President Buhari, because I've been reading it. So I want you all to please support this book, donate generously, and I appreciate you and I say Happy New Year to you all. It's happy well with Nigeria. Thank you very much. We are still the same. I served in the 4th and the 5th Senate. This is 
a very interesting event in leadership. When you are elected or appointed, you choose on the side of history you want to be. Clearly, from what we've read today, from what we've heard, from the reviewers, from those who participated, from the former head of state, our former president clearly chose the side of history he wanted to be, and is clearly placed on that side of history. Those who had doubts, as from today we no more have doubts as to where he belonged and he still belongs. For me, this is very incisive. I'm going to buy 50 copies of this book. There are various books on the side of former president and on the side of Femi, my very good friend. The Ararumes family will buy this book from both sides for the sum of 20 million naira. So I thank our president, president and former, and all those who have come for this wonderful opportunity. And recommend that all those who are here today, nobody leaves this hall without picking a copy of this book. Thank you very much. I intend to keep to the two minutes, so maybe borrow 30 seconds to make it two and a half. When I went to see the former president in Dara with the manuscript of this book, he went through it, he looked at the contents. He said, you have done the nation a favor by writing this book. When are you going to launch it? I said, Mr. President, if you are going to be there personally, I will launch it. But if you won't come, I will not launch. He said, why should I not come? He said, you have taken the pains to write this book, so I must be there. And he's here today. Thank you very much. I also got a feedback from my sources that when our sitting president, Nashiva Jubalatinubu, was told that this event was going to happen and that the book was written by Femi Adishim, he said, Femi is a nice person. I'll be there. Thank you, Excellency. <laughs> thank you. So I want to thank everyone who has come, everyone who has contributed, and those who still support the book. Thank you very much very much. I had followed, okay, for me, I always told people that working with the then president, Muhammadu Bari, was a demonstration of the grace of God upon my life. From nowhere, without lifting a finger to push it, I was invited to assume the position of special advisor on media and publicity. It was former Ikiti State Governor, Dr. Kaebi Fayemi is in the audience, who told me how it happened. He said after President Buhari emerged, they took three names to him as possible advisor on media and publicity. He looked at the three names, brought his pen from his breast pocket, circled my name, and signed in front of it. That was how it happened. <laughs> I had followed General Buhari since he was 41 years old, and he was military head of state. I loved that regime. Buhari, the Agbon regime, I loved it. And I was not just a young, impressionable person then. I was in year three in the then University of Ife. So I knew what I was following. I loved that regime so much. So much so that when in August 1985 that regime was overthrown, it was like my worst day ever. When you pick a copy of the book, I'll urge you to read the foreword, which was written by President Buhari, and then read the preface in which I explained what the book was all about and what it is not about. It is about the software and not the hardware of the man Buhari and the government he headed. For me, Buhari is a conviction. Not just our former president or somebody I served for me, it's a conviction. A lot of people wonder, what has the man given you that you are so loyal to him? If he was not a conviction, I would not have come to work for him. 
I was MD of a thriving newspaper. I was president of the Nigeria Guild of Editors. And when I was asked to come and work for him, I left everything and came. I know not everybody shares this passion about Buhari, but you know there's a common song now. Let them day their day and make we day our day. <laughs> nobody worry nobody. So we that are Buharis, we know ourselves. Let nobody worry nobody. Anybody that is not a Buharis can continue to do what they are doing. I would like to thank, thank you. I'd like, like to thank members of my planning committee, Garibadin Mohamed, the chairman, Azu Ishekwene, Shola Oshunkeye, Femi Baba Femi, Funke Gbemode, Bumi Awunaya, Bayo Omobori Owo, and Miriam Mohamed of uh, Mark II. And then not forgetting our able secretary, Gida Du Shuaib. You are simply the best. I also want to thank my publisher, Safari Books Limited. Thank you very much. We had a seamless working relationship all throughout the production of the book. Finally, let me thank the leadership of my church, the general overseer of the Four Square Gospel Church, Reverend Sam Aboyeji, is represented here by the district overseer of Ikeja District in Lagos, and my pastor, Reverend Ayomide Abraham. We also have head of the mission work in Trinidad and Tobago, Reverend Osare or Emopai. You are all welcome. Everyone here is an illustrious Nigerian. I thank you all. I also want to thank once again the May Gaskia for inviting me to serve him. Without coming to serve, we may not have had working with Buhari. Once again, thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Chief Additional. By congratulating my dear brother, Femi Additional, for writing this book, Working with Buhari, Reflections of a Special Advisor, Media and Publicity. There have been quite a few books already written about President Buhari, and they cover a lot of detail, a lot of it historical, and of course several about his numerous achievements since he first came into office in 1983. But the reason why this personal account will be interesting for those who read it, and I have had the uh, particular good fortune of having read it before today. The reason why this is particularly interesting is because even after eight years of being president, President Buhari and so many books written, President Buhari still remains an enigma to many Nigerians who want to understand who really is President Buhari. Not, not the public persona, but who is he as a person. And I think Femi Adishino has done a great job, especially in covering an aspect of the former president that is not well known, which is his sense of humor, his ability to tell a good joke and to take a good joke, his ability to laugh at himself, I have a long repertoire of Buhari jokes, and Femi has helped me to add a few more, and one day soon, we will launch a book, this time not working with Buhari, but laughing with Buhari. <laughs> but permit me, to share, permit me to share a few anecdotes. Femi Adesino writes that on the day that the then president, President Buhari, was, this was his first day in office at the villa, he requested him to meet with journalists accredited to the villa in the State House Press Gallery. And the president came in, he shook hands with them, with all the journalists, and as they introduced themselves, he had something to say to each of them. Then when Juliana Taiwo of Baloye introduced herself as representing the Sun newspapers, the president said, warn your cartoonist, warn your cartoonist, my chin is not as long as it usually makes it. <laughs> sometime, sometime in 2019, I complained to him very bitterly about a libellous comment that was made against me and that I wanted to give him notice that I would be suing those who had libeled me. And he said to me in his usual style, Professor, Professor, don't let these people bother you. 
Do you know what they did to me recently? They actually printed an invitation card that I was going to get married. <laughs> on, a, <laughs> on a Friday, on a Friday at the National Mosque. He said, and you won't believe Nigerians. There were thousands of them waiting for me at the National <laughs> waiting for me to come and get married. <laughs> and, and to tell you that President Buhari was always ready to laugh at himself. Of course, we've heard already from uh, General IBM Haruna retired of how, you know, when he was being criticized about uh, his journeys and all that. But the second part of that story is that Femi also additional tells a story of how following his overseas trips, which were criticized, you know, uh, by the press. In an opinion piece in the newspaper criticizing his travels abroad, the headline was, when will President Buhari visit Nigeria? <laughs> and the president laughed and laughed. I remember sometime in 2016, just before he went on his medical vacation, I told him I wanted to visit the oil-producing communities in the Delta, and that I thought dialogue with the militants in the wake of the destruction of pipelines and other assets was a good idea. And he told me the experiences of uh, the then Minister of Youth and Sports, Talon, who had visited the Delta some time back. But while agreeing with me that it was a good idea, and just as I was getting up to leave, he said with that mischievous glint in his eye, Professor, don't be the first vice president to be kidnapped. <laughs> <There's>... <laughs> There's, a... There's a story. There's a story that the president likes to tell, and it is about the German sentry. And Femi Additional recounts that story in, in the book. And President Buhari told that story again when the peace committee headed by General Abdul Salam Abubakar visited him. And also in that team were the Sultan of Sokoto uh, and, of, and uh, Bishop Hazan Kuka. They had come to appeal to him and that the anti-corruption war should be waged within the ambit of the rule of law. The president listened patiently and then responded, in the military there used to be a joke about the German sentry. And he then explained that when a sentry is on duty at night, an ordinary sentry, and he hears any movement in the dark, he would back out. Who goes there? Advanced to be recognized with his gun ready. He will then interrogate the person, and if he tells an acceptable story, he waves the person on. Well, the German sentry is different. When he hears a movement in the dark, he immediately lets out a volley of shots, and then he shouts, who went there? <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course, there will be absolute silence because he's already killed the person. <laughs> the president then explained, then then explained to his audience that when he came as a military ruler, he was like the German sentry. I packed all the people who were suspected of corruption and kept them in protective custody. And I told them that they were corrupt until they could prove themselves innocent. But now, under a democratic setting, I see corrupt people going around in Rolls Royce cars, but they remain innocent until I can prove them guilty. Femi Additional writes that on one occasion, President Buhari sent him to represent him at a book launch. And when he asked him, so how much should I donate on your behalf? President Buhari said, give them a big smile <laughs> and tell them that that is what I sent. <laughs> I hope on behalf of the authors today that those of you here will come with more than a big smile. Congratulations again, my brother Femi Adishino, and congratulations to President Buhari for yet another literary celebration of your intriguing and significant life and time. Thank you all very much.
Minister of Information and National Orientation, Al Haji Mohammed Idris Malagi. It gives me great pleasure to be in Abuja, seat of the federal government, in my first official outing since handing over power on May 29th, 2023. I am delighted to be in our federal capital territory, a place that served as home to me between 2015 to 2023, when fate thrust it often me to be president of our beloved country. Let me thank the President Aswaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu for finding time to attend this launching. Our relationship have always been correct and cordial. Let me also take this opportunity to thank all those who took trouble, sometimes undertaking adverse journeys, to visit me in Dora. I thank you all. The two publications launched today, Working with Buhari, Reflections of a Sufficient Advisor on Media and Publicity 2015, the 2023 written by Femi Adishina, who served as a media advisor for eight years, and a volume of five books, Muhammad Buhari, the Nigerian Legacy, 2015 to 2023, edited by Dr. Udu Yakubu, are worthy to temporarily bring me out of racing in my native Dora back to the city. These books presented today once again exemplify the sanctity of records and the role they play in documenting facts and figures achievements and milestones either in our personal lives or in the life of the nation. I told Adishina when he visited me in Dora with an advanced copy of this book of his book, he has done the nation a favor in writing it, as he has provided a one stop shop on our stewardship to the country. The same has also been done by Dr. Udu Yakubu and his colleagues. Without documentation, revisionism wins. Human beings often have short memories, and unless events are recorded in cold print, some people will come and attempt to either distort or even obliterate recent history. But the fact in our favor is that nothing was done under the veil of secrecy. We were as transparent and accountable as possible, being aware of the fact that posterity was the ultimate judge. We kept the records of our stewardship, knowing that we would always be required to account for the trust entrusted to us. This event today is part of the accounting for our two terms in office, and I thank those who have labored day and night to ensure that this history is recorded for now and the future. Government is a continuum. It is like a relay race. You run your course and hand over the button to the next person. This we have done. And the present Bola Ahmed Tribu administration has my support and confidence in the quest for us in the quest for us to have a country of our dreams where there is emancipation 
for our team in preparation. For the cumulative achievements of government after government, I believe we will get there in no distant future. In our journey to the desired destination, there will be hard decisions taken and the people would bear some costs. We can only seek their understanding and state that there was no intention to deliberately inflict pain and anguish on anyone. This is why I apologize to such people at the end of our time in office. Sacrifices are still being made now and will continue to be part of our national life and development. Governments will continually seek the understanding and support of the people they lead for our ultimate good and goal. Let, re re let revisionists not rejoice that they have the ultimate say in the bid to distort history. Facts and records will ultimately prove them wrong. Once some people engage in deliberate falsehood and distortion of facts that pertain to our tenure in office, I take solace in the fact that the records are there and will remain inviolable. My special thanks goes to the chairman of the occasion, General Yakub Gawan, GCFR, for always being there for us. The general, sir, I am most appreciative. <clears throat> special thanks also goes to the co-chairman of the occasion, General IBM Haruna OFR for his unflinching support and encouragement. My appreciation also goes to the book launcher, al Haji Muhammad Indimi OFR for his continuous support. I am truly honored and overwhelmed by those of you that have created time to be with us here today and I cannot thank you enough. I remain committed to our great party, the All Progressive Congress. And the leadership of Aswaju Bola Ahmed Tunibu. I have applied in faith in the strength, unity, and future of Nigeria. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I thank you for listening. Signing off. Up to me. I have seen many of your jokes, and I have realized it's not just a walk in the park. Your Excellency, the Chairman of today's occasion, our former head of state, General Yakubu Gawan, the father of a nation, me the time to go through the very hardest list of protocol. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's just a very, very Beautiful day. Mrs. Sibari, where is that new wife? That? <laughs> Thank you for all you've done for this country. You've been a mother, a leader, and a good wife. Thank you. Let me thank the organizers of today's book launch.
for providing me the opportunity and the audience to reunite with my predecessor, former President Mahmoud Buhari, since he left the office, May 29, 2023. After handing over, you said, I'm far away in Daura. But if you need me, contact me. But I won't intrude in whatever you are doing. I won't interfere or bring down, breathe down your throat. We've partnered to make democracy flourish in Nigeria. President Muhammad Buhari. Thank you. Except when I call him to say, are you living? Are you being in the farm? You don't hear from him. Either to nominate or intrude in the cabinet or complain about location. Thank you for being who you are, a civic. When you left the office, you left many barrows and a bunch of tax for me for continuity. And I told people, I inherit the asset and liability of my predecessor. No matter what you say. We always joke sometimes. And you say you can never please Nigerians. But yours is to focus, work hard, and satisfy your conscience. You have done that. It is reflected. You serve our country with dedication and a common seal. I was talking to somebody last night. Said, oh, I remember you so lost. Buari. I said, stop where you are. I'm not talking to you about a disclaimer. I'm talking to you about a program that I really appreciated and will continue to appreciate. Being here face to face with you is being here with a great documentation of history, candor, integrity, and character. The author of the books, they might have done their best, but what Nigeria we gain from the book is what history must do. And that history is in the book. And I'm glad history has been reintroduced and it is part of our curriculum in various schools and it will be emphasized, I promise you. You have some office at a very difficult time in our nation slide. The economy was prying into recession. Boko Haram has taken over so many local governments and some part of our country. It is easy to forget that the United Nations building was attacked here in Abuja. It's easy to forget the role of armed forces. But 
if this book is carefully read and taught in time of substance in our various schools, the job of securing the in every inch of our nation may not be completed, but you did a wonderful job. And we will not rest, I promise you, until every agent of darkness is completely eliminated. It's a sovereign country. I'm glad to listen to you making a commitment to my administration for support a real politician, a democrat in you, that you are still dedicated and committed to our party. The largest party in Africa. Well, I've emulated you. One of those things non-interference, being a Democrat, responsibility for nation building, staying on course. I am determined to do just that because I campaigned for this job. And you told me in our discussions, it's not easy, but I went out there dancing for it making promises, doing kokuma, doing all kalangos, making music, so I cannot complain. I will be there. It's a, in addition to going through the Niger Bridge and many other things we've done, people would not realize the interconnectivity necessary for economic growth in our real project. In our port project. How vital it is to the economic growth of this nation. A silent worker a man who is a very, very organized and disciplined individual. President Muhammad Dubari, thank you for what you've done. <laughs> to many of you, I thank you for coming to this event. It has been a wonderful, a wonderful time for our nation. Very wonderful indeed. We are facing the roller coaster. Same part of what to do. We remove subsidy. We stop those people. Fleecing Nigerians. Yes, I know they will complain. They did the same thing all over. The lesson is learned from you. But the make of kindness for a nation development and prosperity is not fermented from you. It's learned. How much I share is the editions of this book is by promoting it as a subject matter in the history classrooms of our universities and secondary schools. Then, according to you, 
a civic subject matter of our nation. I wish you a very successful time and retirement life, but not tired life, a prosperous one. I know you won't take a penny from the book launch proceeds, <laughs> but continue to be part of the part of the pillar for our future development. Thank you. Mohamed Ubari. Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates.